Hi, I'm Tony Fowle. Uh, this is uh, part six of the video series about my adventures in uh, converting a lathe into a CNC cam grinding machine. Uh, just a brief recap. I'm putting a grinding head on here, which I made. It's uh, got a very solid cast iron bearing block here with good quality bearings in each end. It's uh, driven by a motor at the back and uh, it's driven through a flat belt like this which they're very very thin so they bend easy without much force. It prevents a lot of imprinting from the motor pulses through the belt into the grinding head and into the workpiece than you would get with normal traditional V-belts which are very solid uh, and generate a lot of force when it goes around the pulleys. The way in which it works, I've got a camshaft which is driven by the lathe spindle. Grinding head here, this is mounted on a new cross slide that I put on which instead of running on normal dovetails runs on linear ball rails to get a very silky smooth uh, motion on here so that we're transmitting the, the, the minimum of roughness into the final cam. The cam is driven by the lace spindle through chuck collet or a, a driving dog with, with centers whatsoever appropriate for the particular cam. It's important for the software to know exactly what position the cam is in because then it will bring the grinding head in or out so that it's grinding away in the correct position to form the cam lobes. Now the exact position of where this is is measured by a rotary encoder very much like this one which we'll see it fits on the back of the lay spindle. Uh, now I've got an encoder that gives 1800 pulses per revolution of this. Now I'm going to try that one initially because I have it but that will give me a guide as to whether I need to have an increased resolution on that encoder or maybe be able to get away with decreased, I don't know yet. One other thing that I regard as important when you're grinding on a lathe which is not designed to have grinding dust going everywhere. There are uh, linear bearings of one sort or another and screws for providing uh, motion on the two main axes Z and X. So I regard as important that the lathe is covered as much as possible. Here I've got just a, a, a simple cover that fits on when the grinding head's in position. It just keeps muck out of the various holes on here. Back here there's a cover on each side. I've got a metal cover here and like the other covers except for the temporary one in front of the grinding head uh, I keep in place when I'm just doing ordinary machining with it not necessarily grinding. But even with these extra covers on, I don't regard that as sufficient. So it, when I'm going to do any grinding, what I'll do, I'll lay out a plastic sheet to cover as much non-moving parts as possible. And in the region where there's likely to be any grinding debris, on top of that plastic sheet, I'll put wet towels. And the wet towels pretty much gather up all the sparks that uh, are flying about. Underneath the wet towel, directly under the grinding wheel, I put a, a ferrite magnet. That tends to draw any loose sparks down towards the wet towel. And furthermore, at the back of the cover on the grinding wheel, which you can't see uh, in the video, I've got an outlet which will go to a shop vac. When we're grinding the cam, this is rotating. The grinding head is moving in and out which is controlled by the electronic controller that I've got up here which I also use for normal turning. In order to ensure good positional accuracy of the grinding head and, and hence a good profile on the cam 
is this has to be accelerated in and out. If I try to go too fast with it, I'm going to lose positional accuracy and it's going to put a lot of strain on the machine. So I need to limit the acceleration with this coming in and out. Now the position of this is determined by the position of the cam. So the only way to limit the acceleration of this is to limit the velocity, the rotational velocity, of the lathe spindle. Until I actually try it out, I'm not sure what is the maximum that I could get away with. And I'm not even trying necessarily for the maximum because this is not uh, a production situation. I'm making these cams for my own benefit, whatever the time will, will be. It doesn't matter to me. They're basically what I want uh, to get some good results. If I slow this right down, I'm, I'm thinking of starting off around 25-30 revs per minute. The problem I have at the moment is the control and the VFD and the, the motor will reliably come down to about 100 RPM. What I decided was the best way to overcome this problem, to get the lay spindle to spin slower, was not to modify the drive system that I've got, which had been quite a bit of work, but was to fit a second motor on here, which would turn it slower. And that's what we'll see in the next part of the video. Uh, so here we are at the back end of the lathe. Uh, so let's see how I plan to use a second motor to drive this at a slower speed. I mentioned that one of the important things was that we've got to measure the speed with this rotary encoder. Well that's fitted onto a little uh, plug here which rotates to drive it and uh, with the o-rings that's just a nice fit in, inside the spindle and a secure drive. To stop the outer case rotating I've got this little plastic torque arm here which I can bolt up to this standoff and that stops the outer part from rotating. So that gives me an accurate measure of the position of the spindle. Now regarding the motor, I found this one in my scrap box. It's an induction motor, it's got a cooling fan at one end. At the other end it's got a reduction gearbox. The output from the gearbox is 76 RPM. So I only need a 2 or 3 to 1 reduction to get down to the spindle speeds that I'm looking for. So the problem then was how to fit this onto the lathe and drive the spindle. Uh, first of all I looked at all sorts of different uh, places to mount the motor. One was I was going to put on top of the, the, the lathe and have the belt coming down. And I could see a place here to fit it but it was a little bit out in the open and away. And then in the end I saw what was the simplest of all, simplest and best of all. It would fit in here with the, with the pulley here, an appropriate length, the belt, the drive becomes very simple. Now to mount the motor, there are two bolt holes on this flat motor mounting plate, which I can use with longer bolts to bolt a plate, steel or aluminium here, which the motor can then bolt to, with some slots in this, I can raise the motor up and down. In fact, I think it's probably better if I raise the motor up quite a bit, it will shorten the, uh, the, the, the belt and neaten everything up quite a bit. But I have a problem with this piece of the casting here. Now, this was uh, originally for the um, direction change on the original mechanical lead screw gears which I don't need anymore so my plan is that I'll cut up here and across here and remove that piece back to the level of this and then 
I'll be able to lift the motor up to round about here. Cutting this out won't uh, affect the strength of the lathe because this has still got a full thickness wall. For the, the top pulley what I'm going to do is bore a hole in this that will fit over the spindle here. I'll also machine a small spigot on here which will fit neatly inside the pulley on the motor end. I'll make the pulley out of this small piece of aluminium here. It's very, very easy to make these pulleys for the poly V belt. The V's in these have a 40 degree included angle, so I've sharpened this parting tool up to how, I don't know how well you can see it there, uh, to have a 40 degree included angle on the end. So then it's just a simple matter in the lathe of putting it in, moving it along. The spacing on the size belt that I'm using, which are uh, termed the J belts, is 2.34 between each groove. So I just need to do one groove, come along, go in the same amount, and so forth. Uh, I've got five grooves on these, you can get, uh, you can get them wider. Okay, I think that's it for today. In the next video, I'll be showing uh, the, the making of the uh, pulleys and the fixing of the motor on here, and we'll see how it works. Until next time, thanks for watching. If you uh, like this video or any of the others, please share and subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates of any other videos. Thanks for watching.